Support for Sports Page is provided by First Central Bank. Full service banking from six locations in Warrensburg, Holden, Higginsville, and Odessa. More information is available on their Facebook page or at the website firstcentral.net. Member FDIC. By the University Store. The University Store is the official headquarters for Mules and Jenny's Emblem Clothing, Gifts, and UCM Memorabilia. Books, office supplies, art supplies, and more are available at the University Store, located on the lower floor of the Elliott Union on the UCM campus in Warrensburg. And promotional support for Sports Page is provided by 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar. 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar, the radio home of University of Central Missouri Athletics. Coming up next on the Central Missouri Sports Page, we'll visit with Mules basketball coach Kim Anderson about his MIAA leading squad. They are tied atop the conference standings with four games left in the regular season. Jenny's basketball is 20-2 and, and ranks seventh in the nation this week. And we'll talk Jenny's hoops tonight with head coach Dave Slifer. In our Sports Page Student Athlete Spotlights, we'll get to know Widget Washington of Mules basketball and Quinesia Twine of Jenny's hoops. So stay tuned. Your weekly inside look at UC of Mules and Jenny Sports is next. Just four games remain in the regular season and the race towards an MIAA title. As they say, it's on. The Mules are 16-6, and 10-4, and, and tied atop the league standings. Joining us now to talk Mules basketball is head coach Kim Anderson. Coach A, welcome to Sports Page. Jonesy, welcome back. Good to have you back here in the uh, Sports Page studio. Thanks. It's great to be home, and I got home at a great time. We are down the stretch of basketball season, and your team is tied atop the conference. Four left. Uh, you know, officially you'll start the postseason in March, but you've started it already. Well, it's really a uh, – we, we talked about this coming off the three-game losing streak last week. You know, it's, it's down to a five-game season. And, uh, uh, you know, last night was the first game of the five games. And, and you know, if you want to win the conference championship, um, pretty much going to have to win all five or, or maybe four out of five. So uh, I think the urgency of the situation is upon us. And – and I thought we responded well last night. One of the great things about college sports, to win a conference championship, you've got to have good players. You've got to play well. But you've got to be mentally tough. When you play this many games in this short of a period of time, you are mentally tested. And your team was rolling a couple weeks ago. You'd won nine straight. We go on a four-game road trip. And all of a sudden now, you'd lost three straight coming home last night. And the guys really bounced back, I thought, last night and showed their mental toughness. Well, we challenged them, you know, over the week uh, after we got back from uh, – Joplin on Saturday. I, I just thought uh, Saturday against Missouri Southern was the, the game. I thought that we didn't show much life, much energy. I, I thought in the other games we, we competed, but Saturday I didn't think we competed very well. And, you know, that's always disturbing to a coach, especially late in the season. And, you know, we, we uh, kind of appealed to them and said, hey, look, here's the deal. You want to win the conference championship? You want to have a chance to play an NCAA tournament? Uh, you want to have a chance to get a first round bye in the MIAA tournament, uh, you better get to work. And I will say this, I will give those guys credit. The Monday and Tuesday we had great practices. Uh, they were extremely focused. Um, and so I, I definitely think they realized the urgency of the situation. And, and certainly last, <clears throat> last night we came out and played, maybe not great, but I thought we played with a great deal of uh, energy and intensity and uh, and I think that's what carried us on to the victory because it wasn't a pretty game, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But uh, I thought that the way we played uh, and, and the help we got off the bench uh, propelled us into a victory. You know, there are going to be times in a basketball season, as I like to say, when offensively you can't throw it in the ocean out of a John boat, but you can always bring the offense or the defensive intensity, rather, and your team really proved that last night. Well, ironically, one of our goals or one of our challenges last week after the uh, Southern game was, you know, we've always talked about holding teams under 68 points. And uh, so we came up with a formula with Lindenwood. Lindenwood leads the league in scoring. So, you know, trying to be a fair coach, I said, all right, they averaged 77 points a game. We're going to hold them five points underneath their, their average. 
72. <laughs> if they go over 72, then we're going to have we're going to have penalties for each point over 72. And uh, inside Mules basketball, at the end of the game, you saw it was at 72. <laughs> And those guys did a great job of making sure that uh, Lindenwood didn't get 73. And they were on me for getting the tee because that cost them a couple of points. So, um, you know, they, they're probably going to try to make me run, and I don't think that'll be pretty. <laughs> well, the other part of being the mules is the target is big on your back. Right now, especially leading this conference, going for back-to-back -back league titles in the 15-team mega MIAA, you're getting everybody's best shot every night. Well, we are, and that's good. I mean, that means you're doing something right. And, and – um, you know, every every game when you go out, and and I, and I think that's part of our problem. I think that was part of our problem a couple of weeks ago. We, you know, we went to Lincoln and we won uh, by a large margin, uh, and then we went to Lindenwood and got beat at the buzzer, and then we we fought at Central Oak and got beat at the buzzer, and uh, you know, to be able to maintain that consistency over a a 26 game schedule, or in this case, in our conference, an 18 game schedule is difficult. So. Hopefully we uh, hopefully we got that out of our system. We came back last, and you know playing at home too helps. And of course we've had great crowds, and and uh, you know we only have two more home games left. We only have four more games left. So um, you know hopefully we can continue that trend. Well, everybody had to muster mental focus last night and patience as it was a grinder. Fifty-seven fouls, eighty free throws in the game over Lindenwood as we. Take a look now at the highlights. It really tested your mental resolve. It tested the fans, I know, and everybody at the game because that second half went on forever. But again, your guys were really focused. Well, they were, and, and you know, the uh, Lindenwood didn't score a basket in the last 10 minutes and 50 seconds. It was just strictly a foul shooting contest for them. And, you know, that takes, uh, you got to have a lot of players because we had a lot of fouls. And, and I, thought we, I thought we did a good job coming off the bench. 10-52, you held them without a field goal, yet they scored 17 points. That shows you the kind of game it was. Yeah, their game is put their head down and drive to the basket. And, and uh, depending on how the game's being officiated, it was a great shot by Ryan Mike Josh. But depending on how the game's being officiated, uh, it works to their advantage or it doesn't work to their advantage. And, and last night, it, it worked to their advantage. There's John Gillum, great great job by John coming off the bench, hadn't played much, and, and knocked down three threes uh, in the first half. The Paris Coyote via Moberly Junior College. Boy, he stepped in and stepped up. Well, he's worked so hard, and you know what? Uh, he, he's never complained. He works hard in practice, and uh, I just felt like I should give him a shot, and uh, he certainly responded, and so did that guy, Dominique Malone. And there was a technical on Brad Soderberg, the head coach of Lindenwood. Coach A gets one later in the game. There was uh, one on a Lindenwood player as well. So again, just a rough, tough, down the stretch MIAA game. And here is uh, Widget shooting some uh, opportunities after the technical, and that gave you a nice little run. They got up by double digits in the first half. Yeah, and, and we let him come back. It was a nice pull up by Lance. We let him come back a little bit at the end of the half. And, uh, but thought, thought we started the second half off strong and were able to put a little bit of distance in between uh, the two teams. There's John Gillum again, three first half threes, big offense for the Mules, and here we are late in the half. Smart play by Widget Washington. Time running down, draws the foul, gets three free throws. Only makes one of three, but still a great play. Oh, it was. It was very, a very smart heads-up play, and, and uh, that probably wasn't a very smart heads-up play there, but uh, that was one of them that didn't get called. There's number 11. Wow. First three minutes of the second half, 10 points. Yeah, he, he uh, and he shot him from deep. And he's, you know what? He's capable of doing that. And I, I'll say this about Dominic. He works every day after practice or before practice shooting. And uh, uh, in my book, he's earned the right to take those shots. And uh, he's earned the right to miss a few, too, because he practices every day without, without uh, uh, you know, every day. He's out there every day. Well, he caused Lindenwood to take two timeouts. Yeah, yeah. He was shooting from deep, and there's a nice pass inside uh, from Damo to Matt Webb. Matt showed great touch, and his teammates awarded him with the ball's pass to the inside, and that was a pass from Webb full court to LB. Yeah, good steal down on the other end. There's a nice play by uh, Widget. Widget really has uh, is, is moved in. He's the league leader now, and I believe, in assist to turnover ratio in conference games. and. 
And that says a lot because he's playing big minutes and uh, handling the ball. Matt, Matt was very, very good, especially down the stretch. Made some big shots for seven for seven for the night. There's Wedge, misses this one, but how about Hammer? So quick Great to clean hustle. it up. And that's one of the things we talked about we needed to do a better job of, and that's offensive rebounding against against teams like Lindenwood. There's a good jumper by Matt. Didn't miss a one the whole night. I mean, they were pretty, too, yeah. just like that one. Yeah. Guys were really focused, as we mentioned, and intense and very unselfish. And the job that Widget does, look at this defensive play. I mean, that's a foul. Yeah. No comment. But, I mean, Widget did a tremendous job. Well, I thought he did a tremendous job the whole night. And You uh, thought he did a tremendous job there, yeah, too. Yeah, I got obviously a did, too. I got a technical <laughs> board. But I, I thought he did a great job on Bazell the whole night. And, and, and that's Bazell's game. He puts it on the floor, drives to the hole. He shot 16 free throws last night. Um, <clears throat> which is really about what he shoots. He takes it to the whole lot and shoots a lot of free throws. I think we had a couple of school records. We played 108 years, most free throw attempts in a game combined, most fouls combined. It was a grinder here as we head down the stretch. Two teams that like to attack too and are aggressive. And uh, again, the defensive effort. Look there, Chuck, a big steal going to the bucket for the dunk. Yeah, Chuck's got those quick hands and, and uh, he's got those long arms and really uh, can get out in the passing lanes when you least expect it. And, you know, good win. Good win against a good team. And your guys never folded. Again, they were tested mentally and physically, and you win by 15. There you see the results as the Mules bounce back. Great to be at home. 11-0 at home. They win by 15. Damo had 26 points and had about uh, 15 of those in the second half. Mules 16-6 and six now, 10-4 and four in the league. The Mules are tied atop the MIAA standings with Fort Hayes State with four games left, and we'll take a look at the standings. Again, the 15-team MIAA, and uh, that says something, and there's the Mules and Fort Hayes State. Four games left, tied atop at 10-4, and four, but look at Washburn, Northeastern State, even Central Oak all lurking right there. Well, there's, there's uh, I guess if you look on there, there's, what, seven, seven or eight teams that, that are within two games of the lead, so. Uh, now a lot of those teams play each other here down the stretch, and uh, so that'll that'll sort itself out a little bit. But I, I think this one's going to the wire. I think Hayes, Washburn, Northeastern, Central Oak, um, you know, all the, of course Lindenwood's not eligible to play in the postseason. So, but I think those teams are uh, they're in it to win it, and I think it's going to go to the wire. Fortunately, some of them play each other. Somebody's got to lose, but uh, you know we just have to take care of our business. Your team in the hunt for back-to-back -back conference titles, the fifth in your uh, tenure here at Central Missouri. When you see all those schools, when you look at those standings, it really brings it into perspective. Those other 14 schools, they have a me, they have a you, they have those guys playing for their basketball team. They want to win just as much as you do. Um, you know, hopefully you can find that little extra edge to want it a little more, but that really says something about your team because I know at times it's been a challenge when we lost three in a row on the road. Bounce back though at home last night with a 15 point win. Uh, it is a grind and your guys are right there with a chance at uh, a championship. Yeah, I, and you know, it's like we said earlier in the show here, it's a, it's a deal where now there's a, four, there's a four game season. You know, you're tied with, you're actually probably tied with two other teams at this point, but the other guys are only a game behind. So, um, you know, you created an opportunity to have the chance to win a championship. We blew an opportunity earlier. Not oftentimes you get another one, and and uh, this will be the last one. You know, so you got to you got to really uh, apply yourself. And I, and I, again, I go back to practice on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, I thought we did a good job. I really did. I was really impressed with our our mental focus and and how engaged we were in the game and in the practice and everything and. I thought that was uh, that was huge in our preparation because Lindenwood, you know, as a team of two weeks ago, uh, you know, beat us at the buzzer down in, in St. Charles. So, uh, you know, I think our guys were ready to play. Saturday, next to last home game of the season. Hope you'll come out to the multi. It's Lincoln, 133-30 doubleheader. It's Hall of Fame Day. That always brings a great crowd and the great history of uh, UCM sports. We'll talk about your connection to the day in a moment. But Lincoln comes in here. Their record is not good, but they've got good players. They went to Maryville and beat Northwest. That tells you about all you need to know. Yeah, and we talked about that after the game last night. You know, we went down to Lincoln and we beat them, and we beat them bad. But um, they went to Northwest. I, the thing I always keep coming back to is they went to Maryville and won. And it was not a fluke. I mean, they went and played well and won. So uh, they are a capable team. Uh, 
Cedric Riddle's a tremendous player. He's, he, he may lead the league in scoring or he's up there near the top. And um, Cedric Coles is a nice player, a nice uh, wing player with some size. And um, so you can't just roll it out and play. You got to be ready. And, and uh, our preparation's been good. Hopefully uh, tomorrow we'll have another good practice. Uh, they, are not, they are not a team that does a lot of things. Um, they, they penetrate a lot. They set a few ball screens. Uh, they like to run. They like to get out and run. They probably play some zone. So it'll be, it'll be a challenging game. And the, the thing about this league, everybody's good. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's going to be a first place team and a last place team. Uh, unfortunately for Lincoln, you know, they haven't been able to win very many games, but they're still a good team and uh, they have good players. So, uh, you know, Cedric Riddle will be an all-conference player and he, he, very, he should be, you know, he's a good player. So uh, it's the old deal. You got to get ready for every game. I talked about that last night on the radio. You take our last place team in the MIAA and put them at about 75% of the conferences in Division Two, and they're going to be up at the top half of the conference. And when you see top teams play bottom teams in our league, normally they're five, six, seven point games. It's not like a lot of places where they're 30, 40 point wins. You're, you're just not going to go out and over talent many people in this conference, as you mentioned. Saturday is a special day for you personally. Uh, your 06, 07 team is going into the Hall of Fame, 31 and four, won the conference, won the conference tournament, hosted the regional, won the regional, had crowds of almost 7,000, went to Springfield, Massachusetts, advanced to the final four, went to overtime with a team that had won uh, 54, 55 straight games in Winona State. Uh, one of the best teams in school history. Rick Gosnell, who played Mules basketball in the 70s, is going in. Our basketball table crew, 150 years of combined service. They're going in the Hall of Fame. Uh, they got a workout last yeah, night with 57,080 free throws. So a lot of connections to UCM Hoops and a special team to you going in the Hall this year. Yeah, it's going to be, it'll be a, a lot of fun. Um, uh, some of the guys will be back. Not as many as, as obviously we'd like. Uh, uh, some of them are still playing. You know, you got Zach Wright still playing overseas, and and uh, I think Alonzo Brooks is still playing. And uh, you know, some of the guys have real jobs and and uh, can't get away. But I think a few of our guys will be here, and and uh, it's always a special time to uh, uh, to be able to see those guys. I know Fred Dudley's coming back with Tiffany, his wife, and and little Fred. So that'll be neat to see them because that's five years ago. So little Fred will be. You know, he may be driving by now, for all I know. But, uh, uh, you know, it'll be neat. Kyle Weymouth, I know, will be here and, and um, some of the other guys. So uh, special weekend and, and uh, for a special group of young men and, and just proud to be able to, to be a part of that, that group and coach that group. Congratulations on the win. The team going in the Hall of Fame. We'll talk to you next week. All right. Thanks, Jonesy. Coming up next here on Sports Page, we'll get to know Mule senior guard Widget Washington, the conference leader in assist to turnover ratio. That's next here on KMOS TV. I was ready for a career change, and the University of Central Missouri had the program I needed. I always wanted to be a teacher. Now I'm finally able to do what I love. I was ready to start a family, and I needed more job flexibility. UCM's Master of Arts in Teaching degree prepared me for the classroom. Use your experience in the professional world to make a difference in the classroom. Earn your MAT degree online in Lee Summit or Warrensburg. Get started at ucmo.edu slash MAT. They started a revolution. Women are changing the way they're thinking about themselves. We were so in your face. There were so many of us. To turn wrongs into rights. What unites women is the refusal to be manipulated any longer. And inspire generations of women to make their own way. It was exhilarating as we were breaking new ground. Makers. Is your family struggling to organize and finance a college education? Answers to your questions may be just a phone call away during KMOS Live Countdown to UCM. During this program, individuals dealing with the transition from high school to higher education can ask experts about college financial aid, scholarships, and admissions. The path to college is not always clear, so let KMOS be your guide. Watch KMOS Live Countdown to UCM. Hi, I'm Galen Doty. And I'm Wes Hinches. We invite you to join us right here on Agro Legacy. Our mission is to help you pass your legacy to the next generation the best way possible. That's Agro Legacy right here on KMOS TV. Thank you for watching KMOS Channel 6.1, Sedalia, Warrensburg.
and welcome back to Sports Page here on KMOS TV, Missouri PBS. In this Sports Page Student Athlete Spotlight, we'll get to know Mule Senior Guard Widget Washington. My name is Widget Washington. I'm the starting point guard for the UCM Mills basketball team. Basketball means to me, it means everything. Like, it got me out of the rough neighborhood I came from. Got me through college, it's getting me through college, got my school paying for it, so my mom won't have to pay for it. So it, it helped me a lot. It, it mean everything to me. My role model was like my uncle growing up. Once he, he, he just kept me into sports, kept me into sports. So he, he really introduced me to basketball because I was more of a football player, but he introduced me to basketball. And like ever since then, like he just been pushing me, pushing me, pushing me to stay in school, keep chasing my dream and everything. So. I thank you for everything you did for me, uh, introducing me to basketball. Well, coming off a loss or an injury, it just motivated me like that I know that we should have won the game and that the next practice I'm gonna come in and work harder and harder. And when if one of, one of us get hurt or if I get hurt, we just do our best to stay in treatment with Ron every, each and every day and work, keep working hard in the treatment. And then once you get back on the court, you get prepared to win the next game. What I bring to the team is like my energy, my hard work, you know, getting everybody else in the right position to score the basketball or just myself even scoring the basketball, helping the team at any, any point of the game when they need me or need me to make a play for another person or for myself. That's what I, I, I'm best for the team. That's, why I, that's how I help the team. My playing style, I start off on the defense end, and my defense leads to my offense. If I'm playing good D, getting up into it, I know they even gonna make a turnover, or one of my teammates gonna get a steal, and that's gonna lead to us fast break, or me getting a jump shot or a layup. What motivate me to, you know, wake up every day and go hard on the basketball court, or go keep going, doing the right thing in the classroom, is, is my family. They motivate me, they, they call me every day, make sure I'm up, or, if I need anything, me or my coaches, you know, they, they stay on us about being in the classroom. And then we got practice, we everybody just wake up, you know. If, if one person didn't wake up in time for practice, one of the teammates will call and make sure he get there. So we come to practice and work hard. After I graduate college, I'm going to uh, work out this summer and then get ready like to go overseas and, and play uh, pro basketball. I got a lot of workouts with a couple like players from that's overseas now that work out in some that I know and you know just be in the gym with a trainer this summer and everything just work work until the camp come up and then head to the camp in Vegas and then just head from there I see the rest of the season going good and you know we these these last three losses really woke us up and made us think like come back down to earth that we're not better than everybody so I think it, I think these last three losses helped us realize that we need to really come play each and every night, no matter who, what team it is. It's in the conference because this is a, this is one of the best conferences in the country. So you got to come play hard every night. But Coach A opened our eyes yesterday and everything, taking our jerseys and making us realize that we need to work every day to prepare for the next team and the next game. So the last, the, I think the season will go good from here. From here on out, we're gonna go good. We're gonna finish it hard and try to win the conference uh, title alone. Uh, I reached a lot of goals, like this being my last uh, year, you know, came back helping the team, you know, being one of the top assist uh, players on the team and uh, averaging one of the top on the team in steals and everything. I'm just, you know, just happy that I, I could bring uh, certain things to the team that, you know, other people can't, but I'm just here to help the team and everything. And, I, and our goals is to, you know, go far as we can to the national tournament. First, we got to take care of conference get to the national tournament, go to the Final Four, and win the national championship. That's our goal. Uh, college opened up a lot of doors for me. College is it's been great. It's one of the, I'm sad it's my senior year and I gotta, you know, I gotta leave and graduate and leave, but college has been the best, man. It, you know, it just made me a better person. My first two years I was out in Colorado and I was out there alone, so I didn't have my parents or nothing. So it just made me really become a man, 
on like in the classroom, on the court, and just being alone, living by myself. So it helped me a lot. It helped me big time. The senior from Kansas City is near the top of the league in assist to turnover ratio and in assists at over five per game. The honorable mention all MIAA selection out of Kansas City from last season also averaging 12 points a game this year for the 16 and 6 Mules played terrific defense last night in the victory over Lindenwood. Coming up next on Sports Page, we'll take a look back at how Central Missouri's winter and spring sports teams performed this past week. And we'll visit with the head coach of the number seven ranked Jenny's basketball team, Dave Slifer. All of that's on the way when Sports Page continues right after this. Coming to Independent Lens. He helped design the bird's nest of Beijing's Olympic Games, and he's China's most famous artist. But Ai Weiwei is also its most outspoken critic, and he pushes the buttons of a police state. By simply eating dinner there, it was an act of defiance. The intersection of art and dissent in the digital age. If you don't act, the danger becomes stronger. Ai Weiwei, never sorry. Load up your golf clubs, grab your spikes, and head out to the first tee. As our way of saying thank you for your financial contribution at the $50 level or higher, KMOS will send you a member card. In addition to great discounts at restaurants, attractions, and bed and breakfast all across Missouri, the member card also offers two-for-one greens fees at several Missouri golf courses. Improve your swing while taking in beautiful Lake Vistas or experience the rumble at America's only golf course above an active mine. Take your game to the next level by playing around on us. Call 1-800-753-3436 and support KMOS TV, Missouri PBS. Thank you. Is your family struggling to organize and finance a college education? Answers to your questions may be just a phone call away during KMOS Live Countdown to UCM. During this program, individuals dealing with the transition from high school to higher education can ask experts about college financial aid, scholarships, and admissions. The path to college is not always clear, so let KMOS be your guide. Watch KMOS Live, Countdown to UCM. You're watching KMOS Channel 6.1. Sedalia, Warrensburg. And once again, thanks for watching Sports Page here on KMOS TV. Coming up in just a moment, we'll visit with the head coach of the seventh ranked team in the country. Jenny's basketball coach Dave Slifer. But first, let's take a look at how the Mules and Jenny's performed this past week. And we start with the Mules wrestling team. The Mules had a solid performance at the MIAA tournament last Sunday in Edmond, Oklahoma, finishing in third place. The Mules finished ahead of 17th ranked Fort Hayes State, Lindenwood, and Truman. The Mules finished behind perennial national title contenders Nebraska Kearney, the national champs a year ago, and Central Oklahoma. The Mules had six place finishers at the event. UCM Track and Field had five provisional qualifiers at the Iowa State Classic last weekend in Ames. Senior Lavin Cialo won his fourth straight 5,000 meter run. The Mules are ranked 15th in the nation this week. The Jennies are ranked 10th. Jennies Bowling is still ranked number one in the nation. The Jennies finished in second place at the Southern University Challenge last weekend in Dallas. Jennies Softball opened the season three and three at the Southeastern Regional Invitational last weekend in Durant, Oklahoma. Ashley Bingston led the way for a solid Jennies offense with eight hits, four runs, and four RBI. Mules Baseball opened their season at Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas, as UCM alumnus, Mules Baseball All-American and Houston Astros owner Jim Crane invited the Mules to Houston to host the Astros in Action D2 Invitational. The Mules went three and one at the event with wins over Abilene Christian, Arkansas Monticello, and Arkansas Tech. Kyle Greasehaber paced the Mules with seven hits, five RBI, and two homers, including the go-ahead two-run homer with two outs in the seventh against the Bull Weevils of UAM, and that gave the Mules a two-to-one win. Jenny's basketball is 20 and two overall. They are 12 and two in the MIAA, ranked seventh in the nation this week in the WBCA USA Today Division II 
top 25. It's the highest national ranking in Jenny's basketball history in the WBCA poll, which was launched in the mid-90s. Joining us now to talk about his team is the winningest coach in conference basketball history, Dave Slifer. Slife, welcome back to Sports Page. Good to be here, Jonesy. Coach, uh, what a season. 20-2, and 12-2 and two in the league. You've won seven in a row. This is pretty fun, huh? Oh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, kids get along well, and uh, part of it's winning, but uh, part of it is uh, we've got just an interesting mix of kids. And uh, although maybe at times we'd all like them to win by more points, they do find ways to win. And I think uh, uh, Kathy Anderson had it right. She just says that these guys just like to win. They don't like to do the other things, but they do like to win. And you can tell that when they're on the floor. These are tremendously talented individual players, but it's pretty clear. And I, to me, it was clear from game one when they stepped on the floor this is a group of winners, and you recruited winners, and, and, and it shows. Well, I mean, obviously two kids from Trinity Valley who were 37-0 uh, and 0 last year, won the Juco National title. Uh, that's a good start. And uh, Nicole has uh, just gotten better and better all year long, uh, playing well. And we got some other kids that are starting to, to step up a little bit right now. Keanu Flax is the reigning MIAA Player of the Week. You went 4-0 and on a rugged four-game road swing, and she was unbelievable. 30 points one game at Central Oak, had 20 at uh, Missouri Southern, and it didn't seem like she missed a shot on that road swing. Well, her uh, grandmother and father were at the Central Oak game, and we'd love to have them come back anytime they want to because she was really locked in and really played well. Uh, she's uh, definitely a, a tremendous player, and, and I think the thing that everybody is excited about is that uh, she is one of the – leaders on this team. Uh, she Ever since she got here, uh, she is such a hard worker and a, and a fun kid to be around. Uh, kind of no nonsense too. There's not a lot of extra stuff going on with her. It's just, hey, let's win. You look at this team, you're amongst the nation's leaders in scoring, three-pointers per game, three-point percentage. A fun team to watch on offense. I know the last time we talked on the show, you were lamenting the defensive effort. Has it gotten any better, or has it still got a ways to go? You know what? I think so. Uh, uh, last night's game was a different game, and uh, I, I ended up running some numbers from it. And I, thought, I was thinking to myself, you know, I don't think our defense was any better last night than it was when we gave up 75 points. There just wasn't that many possessions. But uh, honestly, uh, I think we gave up about uh, one point one points per possession at Lindenwood and then last night it was about 0.77 so that's an improvement. You look at your team uh, going through that four game road swing to me that showed the toughness of the ball club going 4-0. Well, it is, and there's any time you take a team on the road, you're concerned that uh, you know there's a lot of different things that can happen. Uh, uh, somebody may you know get mad at somebody, just all sorts of different things. And this group uh, has so far has not gone with that, and we've uh, really been focused on just basketball. And uh, I, I will say this, and I've said this quite a few times, it's amazing. Some of our other conference teams have road trips like that all the time, where they go Thursday, Saturday. That's if you have about four of those in a year, that's got to be tough. It does, and we're four fortunate where we are located geographically kind of in the heart of the MIAA. Home last night for Lindenwood. First home game in 18 days. It was great to be home, huh? It was great to be home. Uh, the kids uh, uh, really, I, I thought we had a good pregame, everything else, but that first half was uh, very reminiscent of uh, KUTCU men's basketball. And uh, fortunately, we were able to uh, score a few more points than they did come back after the first half and play pretty well. It was really sluggish. Lindenwood only had seven players. They literally would run back in a zone when you were shooting free throws, sit there and wait, walk it up the floor. You know, they really had a good game plan to try to quell the uh, tremendous talent and offensive ability the Jennings had. Well, they did. Uh, we, we finally said, all right, if they're going to play this way, uh, because when we were at Lindenwood, they just dribble penetrated like crazy. Well, last night they were wanting to take the shot clock down to 28. Or, uh, you know, 28 seconds and then shoot it so they didn't have very many possessions. So we started pressing them and we got a few turnovers and kind of wore them down a little bit on the press. Flex had a pretty solid first half, good stick back jumper there, but I tell you, we saw Embry hit a three, uh, Redmond hit a three. You had some different players stepping up and scoring outside the big three when you needed an offensive punch. Well, we're going to have to have that this uh, this in the next coming couple weeks because we just need some other people to step up and uh, feel confident that when their time comes, and they're not going to get a lot of shots when you got three offensive players like uh, like we've got, but uh, they need to step up and 
uh, you know, every once in a while they'll have a game where they do get off 10 shots. Speaking of stepping up, there's Brianna Lewis, 0 of 6 from 3 in the first half. Great pass there, by the way, to Cadell, who was playing with a heavy heart. We'll talk about that. But, uh, boy, Brianna Lewis, incredible in the second half with 22 points after halftime. Well, the thing about Bree is uh, she could miss uh, six in a row or 10 in a row or 12 in a row, and she doesn't care. She thinks she's going to make every shot after that. And that she's proven that, uh, you know what, it is pretty good odds to have the ball in her hands and let her shoot it because uh, a lot of good things are happening when that happens. Again, second half, much better for the Jennies. Good move there by Flax. In addition to the threes from Lewis, you were starting to get good low post high percentage shots. Well, we did the zone, uh, the first half, when you don't hit any threes, all of a sudden that zone could stay packed in. The high post didn't open, the short corner, the low post didn't open because everybody's packed in. Second half, we finally stretched the defense out a little bit, made some threes, then there were some openings for, for Flax and the cold. And again, Lewis just can put points on the board so quickly, one of the best in the nation at three-point shooting, and you just don't get frustrated anymore as a fan when she's on a cold streak because you know it's coming and there's Watley hitting the big three again when Watley and Embre and Redmond are knocking down threes it, it opens it up even more. Sure does and uh, there you see Flax get it in the high post kick it right back out to her buddy and uh, she Bree just knocks it down so uh, uh, that puts a lot of pressure on, a, on, on any zone whenever you get the ball in the high post and are able to look inside then kick it back out. And there you see Bree takes a little shot steps back knocks it down it was a show and it was a heartbreaker for uh, Lindenwood, and I know it's been somewhat of a tough week for one of your top players, Nicole Cadell. Her uncle passed away earlier this week back home. I know she was playing with a real heavy heart last night. Well, she was. Uh, she texted me this morning and said, hey, I got in. I, she took a flight back to, to Alabama and got the funeral Saturday. And that uh, was her dad's brother, and uh, he's one of the guys that kind of helped raise her at times. And so she had just been on the phone with him at 1155. Uh, on Monday, uh, right before noon, and then at one o'clock he died. And it was a very sudden deal. I mean, he was in the hospital at the time, but uh, still not sure exactly what happened. But uh, uh, we'll find out. There's you talking to Breed. You tell her just keep shooting. Well, I, I think that was one where uh, we were uh, down about three minutes, and she still took a three uh, very early in the shot clock, and she said, "Coach, my bad." And uh, we just say, uh, "Okay, Bree, whatever." It's you know, let's go back to halftime. 22-20, you were down. You guys didn't come out till there were uh, about 30 seconds left uh, at halftime. It must have been quite a message. Well, I tell you what, when you've got uh, a lot of experience in the locker room, uh, and that's uh, Josh Keister and Tammy Slifer, uh, I do get my talk in, but uh, they have a tendency to uh, play off of it. They, uh, last night, did not want to stop. They just kept going and going. Well, you got three head coaches. Uh, all three of you uh, have been successful head coaches, so uh, certainly a great bench there for you. Last night, uh, you win 20-2, and two, Slife, 12-2 uh, and two in the league, and you're not in first place. Unbelievable, this league. I mean, this year, there are about four or five teams that are still within striking distance, and right now, it's just like a heavyweight fight. Uh, it'll come down, hopefully, to the final game at Washburn. Still plenty of work to do, but... You're 20 and two. You're 12 and two in the league, but there's Washburn 18 and three overall, 12 and one in the conference. Well, Washburn's really hit their stride. They're guard people, and they've uh, they're they're just longer at every position than everybody else. And then all of a sudden, defensively, you're not getting those clean looks like you got. And uh, I'm gonna have to get this male practice squad uh, <laughs> reared up, geared up for some defense because uh, you know they're they're a little bit bigger and stronger, and we got to figure out ways to get shots off. Well, let's take a look at those conference standings. 15 team league, as I mentioned, the uh, Jennies at the top. Look at all those teams, but there you are, right there. Best overall record, first team to 20 wins, 12 and two, but. Northeastern State, Emporia State, two teams you've beaten. Uh, they are right behind you. You look at the top four in the league's life and even mix in Truman and Hayes who are on a run. There aren't many losses recently amongst that uh, top six or seven. Everybody's on a long win streak right now. Well, they are, and uh, hopefully Washburn will find a way. Uh, Northwest, they go to Northwest Missouri on Saturday. They still got to go to Emporia. And then, of course, we've got that last game of the year with them, which we're all hoping is for uh, some type of a title. You're still, again, in the hunt for the title, but the top four teams in the league get a bye in the first round of the MIAA tournament, don't have to play a play-in game on a home site 
and go straight to KC, and you're 20 and two and still no lock for a top four spot. No, it's not. And, uh, I think the league is uh, pretty darn strong this year. I'm, I'm gonna have to say it is. And I was uh, listening to or read an article of with Fort Hayes State men's coach, and I, I thought it was hilarious that uh, he he said that in the last few years the middle of our league has been better than anybody else's middle of the league, and uh, I think our top six or so are, are very, very good basketball teams right now. Well, Saturday at 1.30, you host Lincoln at the multi next to last home game, folks, for these 20 and two seventh ranked Jennies. And uh, Lincoln's a solid ball club and uh, they're familiar with you. Lincoln's coached by Nicole Lindsay Collier, former player of yours at Western, former assistant here at UCM. Not a lot of secrets there. No, there's not. Uh, they do have a player themselves, uh, Booker, uh, number five, who's not going to play. And the reason I put to say this is because she had probably the best block of the year on Flax, where she blocked it against the backboard against Flax, who you know we, we think is the best player in the league. And uh, she's very, very athletic. And they've got some athletic kids. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge, and you're down a player too, so uh, it's going to be real tough. You're down a rebounder. Somebody's going to have to find a way to get some boards. Well, that that's the deal. Is we're going to have to find some other kids that are going to step up and rebound for because our rebounding has uh, not been quite what we think it is or should be. And without Nicole, who's averaging a double-double, then we've got to have some other kids find a way to get some blockouts and then go retrieve the ball. You're off next Wednesday, so a break before the final three games of the season, then the postseason. Is that a good thing? With this Absolutely. Team's no, we need to take a little break. And uh, uh, it will take Sunday and Monday off at least. Uh, that way, Nicole's going to get back Monday night for class. So, uh, you know, we won't even practice Sunday or Monday. So she can get her business taken care of. And then Tuesday, we can get back to work and see if we can't uh, get some things ironed out. I think 548 wins for you now in 24 years as a head coach, ninth year here, back to back 20 win seasons, uh, hopefully a 20 plus win season, and then some this year. I got to feel pretty good about where your program's at right now. Well, we do, and uh, anybody that's has seen us play still says, you know, gosh, if you had just had Shelby too, and uh, she'd make us deeper, but we're going to get her back next year for, for at least three years, so we're, we're excited about that to add her back into that mix. Yeah, that's the thing. We're having a special season. Oftentimes when you're having a special season, it's all seniors. Yeah. Now, you've got some really good ones, but this program has got a chance to be awfully good again next year. Yes, we do, and uh, we're scouring the JUCO ranks right now to find another big. So uh, Nicole's graduating with uh, Aaron Redmond and we need to find a big and we're looking for it and uh, have not quite nailed it down yet, but <laughs> it's, it's too early right now. We'll find it. 11 rebounds a game is kind of hard to find. <laughs> it is. And she is an undersized post that uh, is a very big presence in the inside. Again, we're talking it over with Dave Slifer, the Jennies and Lincoln this Saturday. Hard to believe coach only two games left and we've started to see at home we've started to see the crowds uh, pick up and, and get there uh, early and watch both games which is a long investment of time for a fan you know that's got families and things and and uh, certainly uh, I particularly, can tell particularly last night with the link the wow. men's game now we did our best there's no 15 kidding. fouls called but uh, that was a uh, that was a long night but uh, uh, there, the crowd has been better and better and better every game, and I, I just keep hearing a lot of people talk the buzz that they really enjoy watching our kids play. Well, they're fun to watch. I mean, that, that's what I tell the people. I mean, they are so fun to watch. They are so talented. They play hard. They play well together. We're going to spotlight Quinesia Twine in a moment. We haven't even mentioned her. She, she's a top player on a lot of teams and uh, is a role player, a very good one on this team. And Simone Murray and and your whole bench crew. I mean, th this is a group that and a lot of times fans don't see this a lot of, a lot of teams have chemistry issues or sure. infighting or trouble it hadn't been the case with this team they just go out play hard accept their roles and and uh, make every game interesting and find a way to win well they do make every game interesting <laughs> and we wish we'd get one of those games where we could just relax on the bench and just have some fun and and have some other kids get some more time in and uh, that's uh, we haven't gone that route with this team but uh, I'm about ready to say guys let's uh, start uh, getting this game over with a little earlier so everybody gets a chance to play and uh, last night it was good to see uh, Molly and, and Katie uh, mm -hmm. Kelly get in the game and, and get a shot off each and those are some families that love UCM, some kids that love UCM. So big applause when they got into the game Absolutely. Late. And Molly uh, is from Lee Summit and has ingrained herself at the Senior Citizen Center. Mm -hmm. And they have signs, Molly's Mob. And it's just neat <laughs> that it took her two weeks of talking to, to, to senior citizens, and now she's got her own fan club. 
Yeah, the fan club is growing uh, for Jenny's basketball. I've noticed that. Uh, signs everywhere throughout the multi. They've got the heads and everything going to the kids. And uh, everybody's got uh, their favorite player as a fan. And the neat thing is when you're around town talking to them, everybody – and that's what happens when you got a 20-2 and two team. Sure. E everybody – talks about their favorite player and then some, including Hass, who's our radio guy, Quinesia Twine, who we're going to talk about. That's his favorite player. Uh, I, I, I like them all. I'm politically correct. But it's a lot of fun. We'll talk to you next week on the show. Thanks, Joji. In just a moment, we're going to get to know Jenny's junior guard, Quinesia Twine. That's next, right here on Sports Page. Is your family struggling to organize and finance a college education? Answers to your questions may be just a phone call away during KMOS Live Countdown to UCM. During this program, individuals dealing with the transition from high school to higher education can ask experts about college financial aid, scholarships, and admissions. The path to college is not always clear, so let KMOS be your guide. Watch KMOS Live, Countdown to UCM. It's an exciting time, but it's just the beginning. My granddaughter is named June Elizabeth, but I call her June Bug. My hope is to teach her about kindness and about the love of animals and nature. I want June Bug to have the same opportunities I had by watching PBS. My husband and I feel so strongly about our PBS station that we've included them in our estate plan. PBS is part of our values and we want to pass it on to the next generation. Hi, I'm Galen Doty. And I'm Wes Hinches. We invite you to join us right here on Agri Legacy. Our mission is to help you pass your legacy to the next generation the best way possible. That's Agri Legacy right here on KMOS TV. You're watching KMOS Channel 6.1, Sedalia, Warrensburg. Atlanta, Georgia. I got started playing basketball when I was around eight or nine years old. Um, I think it came natural to me. I used to look up to my older brother to play, but other than that, I've been playing basketball like all my life. So I went to Juco because coming out of high school, I was getting recruited by a lot of good schools, but I was short three points on my test scores, and I kind of didn't want to take the test over, so I was just like, you know, let me take a different route. Um, I had College Central Florida come down and call me and recruit me. And I went there, I took a visit, and I thought it was pretty straight, I thought it was pretty good, and I decided to go to a junior college instead of just being redshirted somewhere. I would definitely say playing at a junior college has helped me become a better player. It's, you get way much more exposure, like it's much exposure, you get to do a lot of things, you travel, um, you have a lot of different coaches that can coach you and help you out, you know, along the way. I think it's, I would definitely, you know, tell anybody that's coming out of school to probably try to go to a junior college first because you get that exposure and then you can have someone like, they have people that like really help you, you know, get better. UCM, I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, my coach told me that Coach Keystrand wanted me to come here and uh, that UCM was looking at me. And I remember calling Coach Keystrand and just talking to him and him just telling me, you know, how the school is and this is a good school for academics and everything else. And I'm just talking to him, I'm really liking what he's talking about. And when I came on my visit, I had a ball. It was it was great. I liked playing with the girls. I got along with everybody here that was coming back, and I just thought it would be the best fit for me. And plus, I wanted to be on the camp that was very diverse, so I chose here. My relationship with my coaches are very good. I love playing here. The coaches are very um, interactive with us. They 
they help us get better, basically. I mean, I like it here, I like them. A typical practice for me, um, I'm pretty much half the time I'm hyped. Um, I love playing defense, that's something I do very well. Um, when I'm here, I try to get better on the offensive end to become more of a threat, not just with defense, but offense as well. So I think I'm more so like try to get at it on the offensive end, but I still try to like brush up on my defensive skills so I can like, you know, become better and better with defense. I consider myself a leader here and there, but I could be more of a leader and step up sometimes. I find myself trying to look up to, you know, the leaders we already have, Nicole and Aaron. So I find myself most times just, you know, trying to look up to them. My main goals I want to reach before the season is over with becoming more of a threat on the offensive end, and I really want to win a championship. I've never been on a championship team, and I'm so excited because I just think we have the potential to go all the way. My major is exercise science. After college, I want to either do physical therapy or athletic training. But I know I'm leaning more so towards the athletic training part, but because I was transferred in from a JUCO, I couldn't do the athletic training program here. So now I have to like take the exercise science route, and then when I go to grad school, then take some more classes for athletic training. So I want to be around athletes. I still want to, you know, help somebody else get to where they want to be. The bonding between the Jennies, no one would ever know. Like, we get along so perfect. Like, everyone, every, everybody's personality just clashes, you know? Like, we can have, like, team events where we go out to the movies as a team or just sit together and eat as a team, you know, and just hang out and just, you know, laugh. Like, I think that's, that's why we have so much good chemistry on the court, is because we have, like, we're so like, we're as one, you know, we all have the same goals. We all want to win. We all want to win a national championship, you know? So, that's great. Becoming a starter or stepping into the lineup, I feel like I have more of a role to take, you know? Like, I know my role is defense, but I feel like it's, I have to be like more of a threat, you know? Or just set this, help, my, help the starter set a tone. Like, to set a tone for everyone else, you know, to follow behind. It's pretty, I like it. I mean, I, I have the game jitters, but I like it. Before each game, I have like a couple of songs on my iPod that I listen to all the time. And then I have like one person that I always talk to to get me hyped before each game. So far, I think we've been pretty good. Like our main thing is uh, working on communication. Communication, getting back on defense, not, le like, not letting anybody like blow past us, you know. Really trying to work on defense and communicating. I think that's our biggest problem. But right now, I think we've come a long way. I really, our team has so much potential. I think we can go all the way. Twine is a key part of the success for the 20 and 2 Jenny. Scored 24 at Central Oak last week. She's averaging 9 points per game. She can shoot the 3. She's a great free throw shooter and she is one of the top defenders in the league. And we will wrap up Sports Page with a look at what's happening in UCM Sports coming up next. The University of Central Missouri's MBA program in Ethical Strategic Leadership offers something new and unique to the Kansas City marketplace. We started with a blank slate and said, what is going to be of most value to the students? In the program, we're going to be emphasizing and building uh, one's skills as an analytical thinker. And those skills are applicable to any job, any industry, any organization. Get started at ucmo.edu slash ethical MBA. KMOS TV salutes the many businesses and corporations that have supported this public television station. Whether it's through program underwriting, volunteer commitment, in-kind donations, program development funding, or event sponsorship. Central Missouri residents are the beneficiaries of their contributions. Kids programming, news programming, fine arts presentations, cooking shows, musical entertainment, educational programming. All enhanced and improved because of our business and corporate partners. See how your business can become involved in the support of public television and KMOS TV. Contact me today at 573-814-9208 or Beasley at KMOS.org. Also, you can find us and like us on Facebook. Is your family struggling to organize and finance a college education? Answers to your questions may be just a phone call away during KMOS Live Countdown to UCM. During this program, individuals dealing with the transition from high school to higher education can ask experts about college financial aid, scholarships, and admissions. The path to college is not always clear, so let KMOS be your guide. Watch KMOS Live, Countdown to UCM. Thank you for watching KMOS Channel 6.1, Sedalia, Warrensburg.
for one final time this week. Welcome back to Sports Page. Before we wrap up this week's show, let's run down our upcoming schedule of events so you know where to follow the UCM Mules and Jennies. And we've got a big basketball doubleheader Saturday at the Multi. The Mules lead the conference with four to play, and they host Lincoln Saturday at 3.30. It's Hall of Fame Day. It's also the next-to-last home MIAA doubleheader this season. You can catch every Mules game on 1450 Coco, 98.5 The Bar, WarrensburgRadio.com, and a tip on 90.9 The Bridge. The UCM Media Network provides a pay-per-view webcast via America One as well, but hope you'll Come out and cheer on the Mules Saturday afternoon. Same thing for the Jennies. They are ranked seventh in the country, folks. Highest national rankings since they started putting the poll out in 96. Jennies ranked seventh. They're 20 and two. They host Lincoln at 1.30 on Saturday at the Multi as part of Hall of Fame Day. You can also catch the game on 1450 Coco, 98.5 The Bar, WarrensburgRadio.com, and on that pay-per-view webcast via America One. The Mules wrestling team off this weekend. They'll take part in the NCAA Super Regional Tournament February 23rd and 24th in Ashland, Ohio. The UCM track and field team will host the UCM Classic Friday at the Multi. Field events begin at 2, running events at 515. The number one ranked Jenny's bowling team in Baltimore, Maryland this weekend for the Morgan State Invitational. The 3-3 three three Jenny softball team in Bentonville, Arkansas for six regional games this weekend in the Arkansas Monticello Tournament. The ninth ranked Mules baseball team, three and one. They open conference play Saturday and Sunday at Fort Hayes State. Mules and Tigers doubleheader Saturday at one single game Sunday at one. They'll need to bundle up for that. The MIAA basketball tournament coming up March 7th through the 10th at Municipal Auditorium in Kansas City. Tickets on sale now in the UCM Athletic Ticket Office. Room 100 of the multi all session passes good for all 14 games in KC are $50 through the UCM ticket office, 65 in Kansas City or online. So you'll want to get those in Warrensburg at the multi-ticket office. You can also purchase single session student and youth tickets through the UCM athletic ticket office. It's open from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday and at the remaining two home basketball double headers. That's room 100 of the multi. We hope to see you in Kansas City. And with that, we conclude this edition of the Central Missouri Sports Page. Great to be back with you this week. We hope you enjoyed the show and we invite you to tune in again next week to learn more on the University of Central Missouri Mules and Jennings. Until then, for our entire crew, this is Sean Jones saying thanks for watching the Central Missouri Sports Page here on KMOS TV, Missouri PBS. Support for Sports Page is provided by First Central Bank, full service banking from six locations in Warrensburg, Holden, Higginsville, and Odessa. More information is available on their Facebook page or at the website firstcentral.net. Member FDIC. And by Union Station, Crossroads to Technology, a one stop shopping source for technology needs, campus compatible computers, software for Mac and PCs, and much more. Located on campus on the lower floor of the Elliott Union in Warrensburg. Union Station, Crossroads roads to technology and promotional support for sports page is provided by 1450 coco and 98.5 the bar 1450 coco and 98.5 the bar the radio home of university of central missouri athletics